Welcome back to UValue, the corporate valuation app for the iPad. In this video clip, we are going to go through the WAC detailed model. If you click on the model icon, that takes you first to a page that describes very quickly and very broadly what the WAC method of valuation is. It tells you that the weighted average cost of capital, or sometimes people just call it the cost of capital approach, is essentially an approach to value the operating assets of a business by discounting free cash flows to the firm at the WAC and so forth. And if you go, well, wow, I used to know the definition of free cash flows, but what does it mean? Here, if you click on the M button, you will see that there's this pop-up box that gives you that. Similarly, for the weighted average cost of capital or what do we mean by terminal value and so forth, you can read that. You'll also see the C button, which takes you to the U value companion. Incidentally, it's a pretty large file, so it might take a few seconds, perhaps even a minute to pop up, but you can see it depends on the speed of your internet connection. But here's the chapter with the WAC method of valuation in the U value companion. If you go to the contents page, you will see the various chapters in the U-Value Companion. You can jump to any of those. And uh, going back to the descriptive page, let's go to the next page of the app. Here you've got to make some modeling choices regarding operating income, WAC, depreciation, and the terminal growth rate. Again, you can see how all the pop-up boxes are all there. So I'm going to input let's say the operating margin, I'm going to input the risk-free rate, the beta, the cost of debt, and the market risk premium. I'm going to use a straight line rule for my depreciation, and I'm going to assume that the terminal growth rate defaults to the risk-free rate. Now, we go to the first set of inputs required. These are the ones that will lead us to our free cash flow forecasts. So let's pick a company name. So let's call it example. And let's say the year is 2011. See that the keyboard popped up, by the way. And I'm going to have 10 years of forecasts. Uh, base year revenues are $1 billion. Incidentally, one very important thing, please make sure to input all the numbers in millions of dollars. Oh, if it's a very small company that you're valuing, at least in thousands of dollars. Because from a formatting standpoint with the outputs and especially the PDF files that are created, it is simpler to work with numbers in the millions. So let's say this company is growing at 20% per year. So I type in 20%. Ah, wait a second. It says invalid input. Why? Well, I just need to type in 20 and the model says percent. And then it asks, do I want to fade my revenue growth over time to the terminal growth rate? And if you're not sure about what that means, as with anything here, click on the M button and that tells you, well, choosing on here will linearly fade revenue growth rate to the terminal growth rate over the course of the performer period. So let's say I want that to fade over time. And I said I was going to input the operating margin directly. So I put in 25%, which is um, what I think the operating margin, or, or what the data tell me, I'm sorry, the operating margin is currently. But it also asks whether we want the last period EBIT or operating margin to be same as uh, today's. And I can change that if I wish. Let's say I think it's going to decline over time to 20% in the next 10 years. You also see there are these D buttons. So if I click on that, it takes me to a web page where we maintain lots of data for you. Industry averages on 100 different industries, historical risk-free rates, the history of the market was premier and so forth. Now, if you click on this, you're going to see the typeface is very small. I apologize for that. But that's because we are viewing this in um, uh, the simulator where the options uh, to pinch and zoom don't exist. So you can look at the uh, in, in the iPad itself, you'll be able to increase the uh, size of uh, the, the display. Okay, back to where we were. We input 25% and uh, capital expenditure to 25% oh, as the initial EBIT, 20% as the last period EBIT. 
capital expenditure percentage as percent of sales, 5%, operating net worth and capital, I'm going to say it was 10%. Let's say the average depreciable life of this firm's assets is seven years. It has a 30% tax rate and the base year depreciation is $50 million. Then we go to the next page where we have to input numbers that are going to give us the cost of capital and the terminal value. Let's say this company has $1.5 billion in cash, $1.8 billion in total debt, and its current equity market capitalization is $5 billion, has an equity beta of 1.2, the risk-free rate. I tend to use the 30-year treasury bond yields, um, the long-run treasury bond yields, and the market risk premium that I tend to use is 6%. Uh, Aswad Damodaran has a somewhat different point of view on these, but you can read about all the options uh, either by clicking the M button here, for instance, you know, it tells you what Damodaran thinks and what Sundaram thinks, and you can make your own choices, really. So then it calculates the weighted average cost of capital. And let's say this company's cost of debt is 6%. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, not the weighted average cost of capital. What it calculated was the levered cost of equity. And given the cost of debt of 6%, it calculates the weighted average cost of capital at 9.71%. And let's say this company has 200 million shares outstanding. Now, since we chose G, the terminal growth rate, to default to the risk-free rate, that number is automatically input. I can also change the terminal WAC if I wish. I'm going to just leave it as it is. Now, if we click Next, we get to the valuation of the company that we called Example. And you can see the pro forma period, the 10-year pro forma period, the cash flow numbers, the terminal value calculations, uh, the PV of the free cash flows for the pro forma period, plus the PV of the terminal values gives us the enterprise value from which if we subtract the debt, add back the cash, we get the value of equity divided by the number of shares gives us the roughly 30 to $31 that the model forecasts as the share price for this company. Now, in the detailed model, I can also proceed to valuation diagnostics and financial statements and ratios. So if I click on that, it asks for a few additional inputs. So it wants dividends. In this case, let's say the company is paying $50 million in dividends. Perhaps it's a, not a dividend paying company, but in which case you would input zero. Let's say operating networking capital to sales is 100 million. Book equity for this company is, let's say, 2.5 billion. And it also wants the net income, so let's say that is 175 million. So once we have those inputs, it tells you, first of all, it gives you a set of valuation diagnostics, such as what is the EBIT implied over the pro forma period, the ROIC, the reinvestment rate, and then a whole set of potentially useful multiples that probably will hopefully uh, help you triangulate to a sense of, does this valuation look reasonable? Then if you go to the next page, you will see that there are financial statements and ratios. There's an income statement, there's a balance sheet, and a few key financial ratios. Now, one other important thing, you'll see that the valuation itself can be emailed. Now, we're working on the air print and air play options, and we haven't activated the email in every single one of the pages, for instance, the diagnostics and financial statement forecast pages don't have the email option yet, but we will work on it and add it uh, um, in, in due course. But if you click on that, basically you can see that it'll send you a PDF file of your inputs as well as what your model spreadsheet outputs were. You can email it to yourself or to whomever. So if we now go back to some of the previous pages, we might say, look, uh, I want to change an input and see what happens if the beta was 1 instead of 1.2. You can see that will lower the cost of capital and therefore for the same set of cash flows, increase the value of the firm from roughly 30 to $31 to, you can see, more like 37 to $38 per share, 
so you can play around with those kinds of numbers. And finally, when you're all done, you know, before either shutting it down or you know, getting off the app or uh, before the next user can use it, you may want to reset the inputs. It asks you to make sure that you do in fact want to do that. And if you say yes, it clears all the cells, as you can see. So here you go. And that is pretty much a description of the WAC method of evaluation. We will come back and do the others in subsequent videos.